when you're selecting your shaman, you wanted to take into consideration the kind of training they've had. Um, would you mind to share with us a bit about what sort of training you've experienced and what is shamanic training? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. I mean, the, the best training that you can do is, uh, is called dieta, it's the dieta process. The dieta, uh, in its most simple form, is doing a special diet. Uh, it's, it's maybe what you call mono-dieting for people who are, who are familiar with the dieting process. In Peru, they have a, a, a type of a banana, it's called platano, it's a green banana, and it's the staple food over there. You normally have it like you would have potatoes boiled on the side, or you can have it roasted. When you're doing the dieta process, you just normally have them boiled. To that, you can add rice, and for those of you who are, who are, who are non-veg, you can also, uh, there's a particular type of fish called uh, boca chico that uh, is, uh, is allowed in the diet because it's, it's a fish, it's a vegetarian fish, so it has a very kind of su subtle, subtle energy. Itself. Yeah. So you're not taking any salt, in fact no products whatsoever. So you're really just eating this food and trying to allow your body to detox and become super, super sensitive because once you've started this diet, then the training process involves taking homeopathic doses of uh, different trees and plants in the rainforest that are like the teacher trees and teacher plants. There's about 200 uh, trees and plants within the Amazon that are like your teacher plants and when you do this dieta process and you live in the jungle on your own in silence in solitude you're not you know you're not using any products shampoo yeah, soap, no distraction yeah no, no toothpaste no, no salt you know what I mean obviously uh, uh, no contact with other people um, yeah it's a very very um, uh, meditative space and it allows you to become super super sensitive and you almost become like a, a one a one with the forest and very connected and very sensitive and then when you're that sensitive and you take these homeopathic doses of these uh, trees and plants the spirits of those trees and plants uh, teach you and uh, it's an amazing process because it's not like when normally you go to like a teacher and, and you know everyone has their you know ego or story that that kind of somehow gets gets kind of incorporated into the teaching yeah, so you're this you're getting, getting yeah you're, you're kind of like cutting out the middleman you're getting this direct connection with with Gaia and with Pachamama it's a very very powerful process it's a big deal because it's not something you can do it's like hard. in a couple yeah, of yeah. days. Yeah, you know, you're talking a minimum of like a do? week, you know, for, for a simple dieta, maybe working with like uh, Makura or Ahasacha. These are some of the, the, the traditional plants that you start working with when you're first starting to di diet. As you get more experienced, you start to, to diet trees. But yeah, the process, even though you may only be in the jungle for maybe a couple of weeks or so, afterwards, you need to also observe a, a diet of sorts so that you're you know not getting like chemicals and uh, additives and you know kind of other harsh stuff into your diet that's going to kind of uh, affect affect the process and yeah there's, there's other kind of things like you know sexual abstinence and uh, yeah not being in really hectic environments that, that, uh, that can affect, affect the diet so even though it may be in a couple of weeks maybe for two or three months afterwards you need to also be following this thing so it's a, it's a big deal um, and how many times um, as a curandero or shaman would you be doing dieta? Well, I mean, you know, a couple of times a year. I mean, if you, you know, traditional shamans who live in the Amazon, obviously are there all the time. So they're kind of doing them on a more regular basis because it's quite a, a big, big deal in the process. If you've got to go to town and do stuff or, you know, there's certain celebrations, then, you know, you, you kind of work stuff around there. So, yeah. Me, uh, you know, I've been doing it for 11 years. You know, I'm out in the forest at least once a year, sometimes two, three times a year. So whenever I have an opportunity, I run training courses. Um, so when I'm doing that, maybe I'm not... When you're cooking medicine as well, you know, a really well-cooked medicine, like the best medicine that you get on the planet, is cooked on a full dieta as well. So that's another thing you can ask people. When whether you'll get yeah whether medicine, whether you no. get a good answer on that I don't know you know like often people tell you what the, what you want to hear because they want to uh, you know they want your money kind of thing but I think that's where your intuition, intuition comes, comes in comes yeah, into exactly. exactly and it's not essential you know I think especially early on it's not such a big deal but yeah it's definitely one of those things that if you really make good medicine you make it on a dieta. Yeah. So what was the benefit of following this dieta and these practices for you? Well, and how does said, it change yeah. your relationship with food also? Okay, well I think. Um, I mean the dieta process is incredible because it's the training process but it's also like a healing system as well so these trees and plants not only 
uh, can they teach you stuff but they can also cure ailments so people m maybe will go on a dieta who are maybe not wanting to train uh, to work as a curandero or a shaman but they have some Just physical because, yeah. or emotional ailment that, that they want to work with so the dieta process can help that obviously most people like to go to the pharmacy and pop a pill nice mm. and easy you know game over rather than sitting in the jungle for a few weeks and then for another three months like observing some kind of like you know diet as well so yeah it's, it's a, in a way it's a process that's di dying out but it's great to see that a lot of there's a lot more interest now from the west and uh, yeah people you know coming over and following this practice i think one of the uh, important thing I'd like to share about the dieta process because a lot of people I think go over to you know the rainforest uh, you know to do the, the the ayahuasca thing and and tick the boxes and a lot of retreat centers offer a diet and it's it's never bad to do to do, do a diet and a detox I would something I'd recommend you know everyone in any walk of life should be regularly de regularly detoxing because we are being exposed to you know so many you know environmental toxins like on a daily basis so it can never hurt but for the actual dieta process to work in the sense of uh, really connecting with the, with the plant spirits and, and learning from that process uh, you shouldn't drink ayahuasca in the dieta a lot of I've seen a lot of uh, retreat centers out there doing uh, kind of you know like you know ayahuasca retreats and you know I think the thing is is the dieta process is very difficult and it's if you're not used to it it could be boring you know sitting in the jungle on your own for days on end eating extremely plain food mm. you know and paying a considerable amount of money to do it is not something that everyone you know thinks that is value for money kind of thing so because of that often when people do their dieta every second or third day they'll do a ceremony you know that kind of keep, keeps the interest level going but if you really want to do the shamanic training then if you drink ayahuasca during a dieta process because it's such a subtle kind of process and you're working you know on a very sort of vibrational level the, the the ayahuasca energy kind of like almost shocks you out of it because it's kind of a much kind of like stronger kind of more immediate experience so if you are wanting to train and, and, and really get into it drink before and then yeah you normally do the diet for a couple of days before you start taking the plant medicine and same thing when you cut the dieta at the end, then you drink as well. But actually, during so the dieta only, process, only yeah, 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 the beginning the end, end, yeah. Not, I mean, not that's as I said. That is, as I said, is for someone who's training. You know, who wants to train? You know, to to, to, to be a space holder or, or a current or wants to even just go deeper. Yeah, into their yeah, own yeah, yeah. It's their own experience, of course. Yeah, and yeah. And, and as I said, it is very valid to do a dieta and also drink. And sometimes that may be totally appropriate if someone has certain physical, phys physiological issues or mental issues and within the ceremonial space the the, the curandero can actually be working on them energetically and, and physically to, to help release us so certain situations it's very appropriate to do that but yeah it's, it's just something i'd like to share because yeah a lot of people are like oh yeah i've done dieta and and yeah there is yeah if different it just, types yeah of there's different, different types different of ways of, yeah different ways, ways of doing it, it. yeah exactly. and depending yeah. on your intention and what mm -hmm. you want to get out of the experience Mm -hmm. um, how long would you say someone could do a dieta up to? Like, what's the longest kind of time frame that people would well, be doing? Well, I know dieta? of one Kurundera in the Amazon who was allegedly on dieta for 10 years. Wow, okay. <laughs> so it is quite a deep yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah, he worked flat, flat, he was eating flat flat for 10 years. Yeah, he's a very, very, very nice man. He sings incredible liquors and, yeah, very, very wise, super gentle. Not many of us have, you know, the time, the space, all the resources to be able to do that. I said I, I do a shamanic training course uh, in Peru and we normally start people off on a, a five day dieta just to get a feel for it because yeah. you know you're in the Amazon suddenly you're on this monodite you're not having any salt people can get dehydrated living in the jungle on your own as well you know it can be kind of like challenging for someone if they just come out of an office um, and once people get used to it maybe we you know offer them the opportunity to maybe do seven days that they can maybe extend a bit more if they're really feeling comfortable with it some people just can't wait to get out and eat real food again i mean it's an amazing feeling after you've been in the jungle yeah. for weeks on end just eating plantain i mean yeah to suddenly you know to break your dieta and, and you have to do it slowly like fasting you can't just go out and start no, eating chocolate course. ice cream yeah. and cake you know there's there's a, there's a process of, of coming off the dieta but yeah it's great to see people's faces when we like provide this amazing spread of like fruit and and veggies and stuff like that. normally the fruit comes a bit later on it's not something you can go straight into yeah. you normally have to start with like steamed veggies and just rice and soup and things like that and stuff. But, yeah wow yeah, yeah thanks so much mm -hmm. for all these insights mm -hmm. like it's really cool. a great detailed answer that you've given us about this dieta